Okay, continue the new birth. Okay. What do you all know, experience? Yeah. Right? Okay, wait. Shout out to the babies. Father. Preaching, teenager, adult. Or even some adult stuff. Little kids in the life. Alright, again. More treasures. I don't have a lot. I'm here for you. And they are here for you. They're ready to hear, hear your words. Because they want your daily bread. They want to know you. And I think now with the new birth, Need to grow, we need to but I hear the see your food. I'm here to hear the song. I said, she's here. We talked about plants. They grow. Can plants grow by themselves? There's some unique plants that we're growing those plants again. But we have flour in the face with the dirt, with the root. What does it need? Water, sunlight, and someone not like me who would probably kill them actually. Plants do that. Because I'll be like, not enough water. Drown the plant. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Fine. I gave it too much water, I'm guilty. <laughs> plants need water. Sunlight. Interesting thing. Did you know plants? They say plants can feel the emotions, you know? Fine. The feeling. It's strange. But they have like a chest and they put plant with that and find it. Get it prosper and grow well. When you put it in a nice environment, cheerful, it grows. Strange. Same we as Christians in an environment together. We support each other with love. Take care of each other. We grow, right? God, the Son, the Son of God, then here helps us grow too. The water, poor, helps us grow. The Word of God is that the living waters, you'll thirst no more. That's how we grow. We need the living waters, the sun, the sun. And a loving touch, right? Take care of it. Sometimes we clip like the long leaves that's heavy. He does help clip too. Sometimes we encourage each other. You made a mistake. God forgives you, but come on, encourage and grow. Have I read your word? When's the last time you read the word of God? Two years ago. Oh, come on. Never mind. Encourage with love. You pray? Do you fast? I encourage us to fast. One time, whatever is one meal, or one day, I'm too. I encourage that we fast. One meal. Oh, one day, whatever you can handle for now. Good stuff. It helps us grow with Him. It helps us grow in the relationship. We need that to grow. As we continue on, John chapter 3, verse 14 through 18. As Moses, see, as Moses lifted up the snake, on the pole. 
in the desert. So the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. It says, who believes in him will have eternal life. God loves the world this way. He gave his only son. Who believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. The famous verse, John 3, 16. Every Christian should know this verse. Holy son came, died. Who believes in the son? Eternal life. The only way for eternal life is to believe in the son. It's Jesus Christ. Let's continue verse 17. God sent the Son in the world not to condemn the world, punish, judge, but to save the world. I find that interesting. He, the Son of God, came to save the world. The, the Pharisees the Sadducee. I can't spell it. I keep saying Y. It's E. The mind is saying Y. They believe he would come, take over, and rule. Finish. They believe that. But they missed the part. He will come as a lamb and to die for the world. You missed that part. We see the word of God. We believe it happened on he came because he loved. He could have came, could have came and said, finish, that's it, done, punish, finish. But he had mercy on his own. And he gave love. And he still gives love today. He loves him so much. He wants everyone, everyone to go to heaven. He doesn't want anyone to perish, says that in the word of God. He doesn't want anyone to die. But he gave everyone the opportunity to be born again. Everyone on earth, past and future, has the opportunity. Everyone. But you know that everyone accepts, right? We have friends that don't believe in him. We have family that don't believe in him. They don't put their trust in him. We have tried and witnessed and share the word of God. Plant the seed. God, take care of it. Successful sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes we feel, I fail. Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. He didn't save everyone, right? Remember that? You have to remember that. He did his part. We do his part, too. We share the word of God. Those who believe in him will not be condemned. But those who don't believe are already condemned because they don't believe in God's only son. We will escape punishment even if we sin before. Punishment is death, that's what he says now. But with Jesus in our hearts, and we grow a new life with him. We meet the Father. The reason we meet the Father is because of Jesus. The story about Moses with the, the serpent in the wilderness. I find that very interesting to me. Numbers 21, verse 5 through 9. The people of Israel, when they were after Moses and the group, they escaped from Egypt. They traveled, you know, how many years? 10 years? 20? 30, 40? 40 years they traveled. 
They traveled for 40 years. They needed a map. They needed an iPhone app. Find where the promised land is. The people of Israel, they started complaining. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Why? Complain. In the past, God provided water from a rock. Can you imagine? A rock. Boom. Water. Enough to feed about three million Israelites. Three million million. Rock. God provided manna. Small bread. See, God provided quail. Can't spell a quail. Those little weird looking birds. Have you ever tasted them before? They're kind of tough. Not that great. I like chicken, chicken better. Quail? Does it like quail? Because they're like the funny looking birds. Should have provided a dodo bird or something. It's funny. There is no bread, no water, and we detest. This miserable food. I find that weird. No bread, no water, but they hate food. I'm like, what food are they eating? They hate Sam, Sam, boy, complain. They had food because they hated something. E, life. Food is life. Okay. Food is food. After they complained, the Lord sent venomous snakes among them, and they bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses. We have sinned against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord will take the snakes away. Moses, fine. Pray. The Lord told Moses, Make a snake, put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake, put it on the pole. Then anyone who was bitten looked and they lived. Interesting, God didn't take the snakes away, He just made a snake. Uh, a pole. Look. They had to take faith to believe that looking at a, a little bronze snake that would save them. People had to, I don't believe that. We got, when God commands something, look. I find that a pretty interesting picture. We know the serpent was in the garden, tempted Eve, but he used the snake to look at. But the picture story is this. The snakes, the world I hear is venomous, it's poisonous. You live in this world, you will be bitten occasionally, occasionally or often. We experience bad things happening to us. We've gone through life long, short, bite, 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 bite. But we have to remember who we look at. Jesus. Our eyes are on Jesus. Even though we get bit, 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 sin, punishment, bit, 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 but we look at Jesus. We are saved through that. Yeah, it hurts. But in the end, we're in heaven with God. 
Even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Do we lift up Jesus? Look up to follow him. Jesus compared this joy to what happened in the wilderness. People were bent by the sermon because they complained against God. The only way for them to have healing is by looking at the snake. The same thing as sin. It's been us. It's way now. Yeah. Sin will bite us. We have to still look. God could have taken it by the snake, but the picture's joy is this. Sin will try to bite us. Bite me. The troubles of the world will bite us. But we know we look up and hold on to him. We will not be lost. Our souls will not be lost. We will not taste the second death. The first death, of which we will. Unless the rapture happens. Some was like, hoping, rapture, come on. Some was like, yeah, I'm just going to go to heaven anyway, I don't care. We all have a time clock set. We just don't know. But it's important that our eyes are still on him. Ignore the sins of the world drag us. If we forsake God, we stop growing too. The only way for our salvation is to lift our eyes to the cross. Put our faith in Jesus Christ. Who died for us? Same thing in the wilderness. People had a choice to look and live or ignore and die. Today is the same idea. People have the choice to look and live or ignore and die. It's a great gift you gave us. Jesus died for us. It's an awesome gift. Sometimes I wonder why we reject the gift he had. But the flesh is powerful. It fights against the spirit. The word of God says the flesh and the spirit war. And we Give, give ammo. You know what ammo is? You know, a gun. Put a bullet in there. That's ammo. Bullets. Same. So, the flesh, the spirit. Who do we give the most ammo to? There you go. The most power. Follow the spirit, well, it be the flesh. The spirit stronger, the flesh becomes weak. Focus on the flesh when it comes to spirit. That's what blocks our growth. Newborn Christian, and then witch. I'm tempted. Everyone gets tempted. Even I do get tempted. Even great pastors get tempted. Everyone gets tempted. Well, do we do the sins or do we endure? Flee, flee, run away. The new birth has three full proof. Proof, proof, proof. Let me see. Every born again person has a new birth. One. Inward proof. Salvation. We know ourselves. Inward. I accept Jesus Christ. 
repent, you know, some kneel, some stand, some dry. Forgive me, Lord. What's the matter? It was something. Second, outgoing proof. Our actions. What we do, outgoing, go to. Outward proof. We can see, look here, change. Number one, who believes that Jesus is the Christ born of God? That's the belief. Jesus is from God. He came. First John chapter five, verse one. And really verse two as well. My faith is in Christ, that He is my God. That's personal evidence. Prove that I am a child of God. First John chapter five, verse ten through thirteen. That's the end with proof of the new birth. I believe my faith in Christ is personal. I know. And God knows if you really need it or not. First John chapter five, verse one and two. Everyone who believes in Jesus is Christ. Born of God. Everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. You love the Father, you love the Son. Verse 2. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commandments. We have the Ten Commandments, right? We have two special commandments to summarize what it says. Love your God with your whole heart, mind, body, and soul, and strength. And then what? Love your animals. No. Love your neighbors as yourself. Love your enemies as well. Love your neighbors as yourself. God and your neighbors. Sometimes it's hard to love our neighbors, right? So, neighbors in church. I hope you love each other. God said you need to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You know who does it is not from him. The second verse, First John chapter five, verse ten to thirteen. Who believes the Son of God accepts this testimony? Who does not believe in God made him a liar? Because they have not believed in the testimony of God as given about His Son. Verse eleven. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. Who has the Son has life. Who does not have the Son does not have life. We breathe here. We have life on earth, a spiritual life, our souls. We have the Son. We have eternal life. Life is short here, yeah. but eternity is forever. Are we spending it with God or apart from God? That's the choice we made. We already chose Him already. So we have eternity. So we're here on earth like a training ground. Get to know Him more better growing and winning 
believers to him. That's, yes. I remind us, remind you, Mary is legal between yeah. man and woman, yeah. Right, that's the truth, right. Thank you. Number two, the truth is what? Everyone who loves is born from God. We love each other, take care of each other, love our neighbors We're from God. If we're lucky now, ask God for help. We need to love our enemies. I know it's hard. We are to love a fellow man or woman with the love of God through the love of the Spirit, not Spirit. Spirit. I know the spelling mistake. Our flesh is not capable of love. It's pretty true. Before I was a Christian, I hated a lot of people to the point that I wanted to kill them. But we love God, love man through us. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. That's the outgoing proof of the new birth. I didn't love people. The only person I loved was my mom and dad, my girlfriend, who was my wife at that time. I didn't care about other people. I hated them. But after Jesus came in, my life changed. The bitterness I had, the anger I had, as I grew with him, and went now. I used to lose my temper all the time. Now, this much. I can't say I never lose my temper, because that'd be a lie. Because I'm a believer, I don't lie. I try not to lie. Because of him, I learned to love my neighbors. Not only my neighbors, my enemies. Love my enemies. We all have enemies. We will have enemies. Our biggest enemy is Satan. And it says we wrestle not with the flesh the powers of darkness. People it's Satan. It's the flesh that fights. First John chapter four, verse seven through eleven. Dear friend, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Did I already say this one? I feel like I said this one already. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Who does not love does not know God because God is love. He is love. And his love is way more than the kind of love we have. God loves seven billion people on earth. He still loves everyone on earth. He hates sin, yes. He desires all to be saved. That's his love. Whatever any person on the big sin, little sin, doesn't matter. And they turn to God. Even if they murder 16 people, they turn to God. They're sorry. He will hear them. That's his love. They really repent. They're really sorry for their sins. He still loves them. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but he loved us. 
sent his son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us, so loved us, we ought to love one another. It's because he loved us so much. You should love another. Sometimes we're like, it's not fair they pick on me. They stole my money. Saying we did to him. We sinned against him many times. He forgave us. So we, again, understand not everyone's going to accept your forgiveness. Do your part. That I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry I hurt you. You hurt me, but I still love you. Because God loves me. I love you. I forgive you. Give it. My part. Finish. And walk away. Romans. Chapter 5, verse 5. Hope does not put us to shame. Because God loved and poured out in our hearts to the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We are not growing alone. We have each other, yes, but he's given the Spirit the, one of the best teachers, the best teacher. He's not like, okay, here you go. Finish. That's it. No. He gives us the Spirit I mean, if you like went into a classroom, you're sitting, the teacher comes into college, the first day of school, you say, good morning, students. I have this big book for you to read. There you go, there you go, there you go. See you later, see you at the end of the semester. We're going to take a test. What? The teacher comes in and they teach, open your books to chapter one. Let's learn about math. Two plus two equals what? You expect me to say five, right? Um, okay, four. I'll say four because I learned, finally learned four. This took math class recently. The Spirit helps us, guides us, and doesn't just leave us alone. It's a guiding light. Sometimes the Spirit will just help you on regular, everyday things. My light bulb went out in the back of my car. I'm like, yeah, I got a ticket for that. So I figured out how to fix it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't take it off. <laughs> ah, what did I do? Holy Spirit said, just plug it back in because that opens the click. Then turn it open. Oh, pull it out. The Holy Spirit guides you. Simple things. Everything in your life. If you allow it. Hey, look through me. The job. I want that job. But Holy Spirit, yes or no. I listen. I allow it to rain. When you grow, you learn to listen to the great teacher, and the great guy. When you grow, 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 and you know his voice. You know his voice too when you grow. Everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. That's first John chapter two, verse twenty. If you're born of God, you will make a practice of doing what's right all the time. Second Corinthians chapter five. This is the outward proof. We practice righteousness and do good all the time during that. I didn't do good before. I got in trouble. That's pretty bad. Revenge, hurting people, saying bad things, hurting people. I change. And living righteousness. Do we naughty things? Change, become better. What kind of music do you listen to? 
When you grow, you know what's right and what's wrong. That's the first John chapter 2, verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right is born from God. Homeless man is hungry, and you have $5 for Starbucks. What are you going to do? In order to Frappuccino or buy him something to eat, you will know what's right and wrong. You can always buy a Frappuccino, whatever it is you buy. Vanilla, chocolate, frapp. I could get that later. Take them, go to McDonald's or somewhere near, whatever restaurant there. Feed them. Do good. There's always an opportunity. You never know when you serve an angel. Second, Corinthians. Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, anyone in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. People who knew me before I was a Christian would say I'm a different person. In about two weeks, I'm going to meet someone I've seen for a long time. You knew me before I was a Christian. I'm going to go to the deaf event. Fine, I'll meet you there. You're going to probably see me. You, a pastor? No way! Remember you used to do this? Shh, shh, shh. I don't want to hear my sins anymore. I remember you did this, this, this. I know, I know. I was a bad boy. But God changed my life. You, a pastor? Well, that's the kind of change we should have. You, a Christian, you believe in God. Holy? You holy too? Yes. What's wrong? I want to be holy. You don't want to party and get in trouble, get drunk, do drugs, watch bad movies. No, thank you. I'll go to the movies. Something good, fine. Go to baseball game, fine. You don't want to do what you used to do. No. I still like to have fun, yes. Mm. Uh, righteous fun. Play disc golf. That's my righteous fun. It's fun. The all is gone. I know some of you went before. I see the all. It's gone. New people change. I remember when I was a new baby Christian, some of you were here. Oh, are you Christian for a long time? The old is it's gone. And you improved, improved too. The old is gone, but some of you became older too. But life has changed, become stronger. Like this picture. Born again. Because I didn't turn out right the first time. First time born. Oops. But born again. New life. New change. Read the whole chapter of John 3. That's it for that part for now. I'm going to close prayer. Do we have a prayer circle to pray for each other? Then afterwards, go to Polly's Pie and eat a fellowship and talk. I want to start a fellowship once a month. I know it's a school night. I have kids, too. Go for an hour, an hour and a half, just chat each other, support each other. And maybe I'll smash some pie in your face. So watch out who sits next to me. Right in heaven, Lord. We thank you. You gave us an opportunity to become born again because of you, your love, your grace, your exceedingly awesome love. Because of you, we are saved. It's because of you, we have the opportunity to meet you, to know you, and grow. 
Or you wouldn't taste the second death. Because of you, we would live righteous. Because of you, I want to become better and grow in you. As well, everyone here say, I want to grow in you. Thank you for all you've done for us. Soon we'll pray together. As we always think of our brothers and sisters, Christ, pray with need. As we leave soon after that, protect us, we drive home or we'll follow his path. Doesn't matter, Lord. Bless everyone here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.